Hey, hi everybody. In this video, I just wanna give you a quick idea of what global versus local means. Somebody asked on the channel, so I thought I'd make a quick video. Sorry about the sound, somebody borrowed my mic, so you'll probably hear a little more keyboarding than usual. Anyway, so let's get started. So here I am in my program, and I'm gonna make a variable x, and I'm gonna set that equal to five. And I'm gonna go down a little bit, I'm gonna say print x. I'm gonna run that. I am using an editor called Genie, and this is the output is five. Okay, so this is what's known as the global space. I am here in the main program, and I've defined this variable here in the main program. Now, let me go ahead and change this and start using a function. So I'm gonna make a new function, and I'm gonna just call it print value. And in this case, I'm gonna put print x. Okay. And then to use a function, I need to call it. So print value. So I'm gonna run that and see what we get. Okay, I still get a five here, okay? Now, so I've defined this X out here in the global space. I'm printing it here in what's known as the local space. So this is local, meaning only local to this particular function. Now this particular function doesn't have any reference to X except for this print. So if I do something like this, x equals seven, and I run it, you see how it now prints seven. So now here's a question for you. Because I changed x to seven here, if I print x now outside the function, what's the value going to be? Probably, well, it depends, depends how long you've been programming. You got two choices. Either it's gonna be five or it's gonna be seven. So if you think it's five, raise your hand. If you think it's gonna be seven, don't raise your hand. So let's test it. And it is five, okay? And this is something that often confuses beginning programmers. They're like, what's going on? So in Python, and probably most programming languages actually, there's this concept of global and local. So in this case, this X is different to this X. Okay, just like outside the temperature could be 40 degrees, inside the temperature is 30 degrees. They're both temperature, but they're different. One's global, one's local. I don't know if it's a great analogy, but it kind of works. Okay, now, in some cases, what you want to happen is that you want this X and this X to be the same. Now, this is not good programming practice, but people do it and it has its uses. So if I want this X to be the same as this X, I need to use what's called the global keyword. And I'm telling the computer that when you look for X, when I do something with X, I'm talking about the global X. So I'm go ahead and run that. And you'll see now we have seven and seven because this X is now the same as that X. Okay, so this is how global and local works. Outside of the function is the global space inside this function is the local space local to that function. So if I had another function, it would have its own X unless I used global. Now, what's interesting, if I don't know if you notice this, is that here I didn't have to use global because I'm just reading the value. How it works, is I get to print value, it says print X. And what it does is it looks around in its local area first. Do I have an X? Looks around, doesn't see an X. It says, okay, well, all right. Is there an X in the, in the global space? Oh, there's an X. I'll just go ahead and use that one. And that is what it does. However, if we want to change it, now watch what happens here. If I do X plus equals five, which I could do normally, so I'm adding five to X. Let's see what happens. Okay you see where we get this error. It says unbound local error, which isn't very helpful, but local variable X referenced before assignment. So in this case, this is the equivalent of X equals X plus five. Okay? And we can't do that, okay? We can't add five to something that doesn't exist. Okay? So let's put that back to that. So if I wanted to do this, I'd have to do global X, and then it's gonna work just fine. But then again, we've changed this X 
which has also changed this x because they are both the global x. And that's the gist of global versus local. There's a few other rules. Uh, you know, if you're using objects, it works a little bit differently. If you're passing values, it kind of works a little bit differently as well. Um, but this is, this is kind of the basic principle of it. You've got the global space out here, and you've got a local space as well. The thing, the thing is that you have to remember to the computer, uh, this X and this X are different. Let's go set and put that back. So we can say that these two are different unless we explicitly tell the computer that we want to make this the same. Now I said earlier this was not good programming practice. And what you would do if you if you wanted to do this the right way, if you wanted to actually change x to, to b7, is you would probably do something like uh, return x. And then what you would do is you would say print value x. So you say x equals print value x. And what that does is that returns this new x to the old global x. So the local x is returned to the global x, and then it's printed out. This would be a better programming structure. Um, it's just kind of the way you want to do things. You really want to avoid global variables if you can. Um, you know, for beginner programmers, it's not such a big deal if you just want to get something working, like a game or something. But if you start making larger programs, you really, really, really want to avoid that situation because it causes a lot of bugs and it's hard to debug if you do have an issue. Okay, right. that's global versus local. I hope it helps. Keep on coding, subscribe for updates. Ciao.